Good morning, welcome to Car Rides with Connor. The time is six, no sorry, 9.48 a.m. and Friday, November 8th. Before you all jump down my throat about Connor being late, um, uh, it's as not per a school, recent comments. It's uh, not a school day today. Not a school day. Uh, sorry, or a work, sorry, day. work day. Work, oh, sorry, sorry, I meant to say a work day. Oh, we could say school day. We are back from New York <laughs> and we missed our babies. So to speak. Didn't we miss them? We mm, did. Oh, Chewy. Oh, Chewy's a mess. He needs a groom. Sorry. Oh, yes. Pardon his hair. Connie missed you. And we missed too. our babies. Anyway, um, we're here to intro. We're going to do Connor's speech. You're going to get to see. <laughs> yep. The speech I did for best buddies in good old New York. And I think I may have, uh, not to toot my own horn or anything, but toot toot, eh, toot. I may have increased my popularity in New York by another 10%. We took stats while we were there. I didn't realize that. Anyway, you guys, uh, I, I'm going to get emotional just reliving the moment, but he killed it. Yeah, I did. He did so good. I shook hands with a lot of people. Yeah. I'll introduce He's myself. So good. And I was still sober as a priest on Sunday. <laughs> he didn't have any cocktails. Mom, I don't drink. Mom did. Mom did. But anyway. Yeah. So here we go. We're we're just here to intro. Um we just a quick recap of what we had a great time in New York. Jack didn't vlog like I wanted him to. He's gonna put some stuff on his channel, but next week. But we didn't want to keep you guys waiting any longer. Enjoy this speech. It's going to be a longer video, but just roll with it. I hope you enjoy it. Connor, you did so great. Yeah. We are now road warrioring off to South Carolina. Our friend Tanner, his sister's getting married and we're going up for the wedding. Yep. Just uh, another quick fun note. While we were in New York, we got to meet Omar. Omar is one of the founding members of the Chew Crew. Yep. And he's one of our subscribers and messaged that... He was in New York City, and we had a coffee and some breakfast with him. I, he actually told us he was going up to Brussels. Yep, Brussels in Germany. Belgium. And then he was going to Germany, too. Yeah. So we hope you're having a safe trip, Omar. It was such a pleasure to meet you. And without further ado, drum roll. Thanks for watching, guys. Be sure to leave a like, hit the subscribe button, and stay classy, planet Earth. Brr, enjoy the speech. Love you, mean it. Bye. Of introducing tonight's keynote speaker, Connor Tomlinson. Thank you so well, much for being here. Many of you may recognize Connor from the Netflix this. series Love on the Spectrum, where he captivated audiences with his, his warmth, humor, and authenticity. His journey is a powerful example of the resilience, courage, and joy that define so many of the individuals that we serve. We're thrilled to have him here to share his story. And we're going to start by playing a short intro video before welcoming him. Welcoming him on stage. Love, love is a dagger, a pretty thing, thing that enchants, but also hurts. Okay, let's set. Do you, um, do you like, like, nature by any chance? That is a very good question. I've never really thought about that. I guess I am a work city person. I just prefer the hustle and bustle. I'm Connor Tomlinson. A lot of you may remember me from the Netflix series Love on the Spectrum. Autism acceptance, it's very special to my heart. I had trouble fitting in. I felt I had to hide or isolate myself. But now, knowing that I can be myself around people I love and those who support me, it's very empowering. Good evening. My name is Connor Tomlinson, and I am so fortunate to have been invited here to speak this evening as a guest of Best Buddies New York. I'm a 25-year-old man, and I am on the autism spectrum. Some of you may recognize me from Netflix's Emmy-winning series, Love on the Spectrum, U.S. Season 2. And I'm also lesser known for my YouTube channel, Car Rides with Connor. You should check it out. <laughs> First off, 
I want to thank Best Buddies of New York for inviting me to speak to you at this wonderful event, and I would like to wish each and every one of you a warm welcome. My autism journey began in the spring of 2004, when at five years old, I was officially diagnosed with what was being termed Asperger's Syndrome, known today as Level 1 Autism. As a younger child, I realized I had a unique memory skill, specifically a tendency for remembering lines in movies and books. I honestly thought this ability was something everyone could do. As a young student, recess was often a time of anxiety. I rarely have ever played with other students or was included in their games or groups. I often kept to myself because I did not know how to approach or connect with the other kids. It's, I felt safer being by myself, and it was comforting and entertaining for me to replay movies and books in my head. When I did interact with children or adults outside my family, I often used scenes from movies or books that I had memorized and tried to, is to try and help me socialize appropriately. To this day, I find it interesting that if I am experiencing a similar feeling or emotion than I felt during a movie or book scene, I will use the same language or actions the actors or characters use to help me in real life situations. Trust me, this is not always the best game plan, and it's got me in trouble at times. Good <laughs> self, do not put Austin Powers inside a packed out of the Anyway, in the fall of 2007, when I was eight years old, my parents took me to the original pancake house for breakfast. This is when they explained to me some of my unique and special skills were attributed to me having a form of autism. At first I was afraid. I thought I was sick or had a disease. I didn't understand what it all meant. My mom and dad quickly assured me I was healthy and not sick. It was simply put to me that my mind worked differently than other people. I was told in such a way, I felt that I almost had a superpower. It was then explained I would start going through some various therapies and getting some extra help at school. I was empowered by my parents to explain my diagnosis to my three younger siblings. I felt glad I was the one to tell them. I believe it helped them understand some of my different behaviors. Elementary school was overall a smooth experience. However, my parents felt it necessary to have me repeat the fifth grade. Mom felt it would help to provide another year for me to mature. There more opportunities for social development and allow more time in behavioral therapies to prepare me for the social complexities of middle school. However, middle school proved to be a bit of a rocky experience. By the fall of my eighth grade year, the bullying I had been experiencing was quickly escalating. I found myself feeling weak, isolated, overwhelmed, and scared. I started to feel depressed and it filled with anxiety on school days. My mom made great efforts to work with the school administration to help my situation. She was met with little to no action being taken, and the bullying carried on. My parents decided they had no choice but to remove me from the public school setting. I lived in a small private school that was run by parents with children of their own on the autism spectrum. While attending this school, I regressed academically. However, the decision most likely saved me emotionally from breaking down, so I am grateful for that year. Due to the expense of this school, along with my academic decline, my mother made the decision to send me back to my local public school for high school. At this time, I feel the need to highlight the direct impact bullying had on me just because I was 
different and seen as quirky by my peers, I sometimes wonder how a little acceptance, some friendship and kindness might have changed the trajectory of my formative years. I had to work with an academic tutor the entire summer before starting the ninth grade. While, my, while other kids and my siblings were enjoying summer break, I was playing catch up in a classroom to prepare to attend ninth grade classes. Thankfully, I was successful and started my freshman year doing on grade level work. I have since been known to say, sorry, I have been known to say that high school was the best four years of my life. I made a few friends and enjoyed the school subjects I was learning. <laughs> Though, did I know what was in store for me? <laughs> Following graduation, I went into the workforce. I worked for one year at Lowe's Home Improvement, and for the past five years, I've been employed at Kroger, our local supermarket. Both experiences have been valuable in my professional life, but I still yearned for something more. This leads me to my latest adventure. I was fortunate enough to be selected as a cast member for the five-time Emmy-winning show, Netflix's Love on the Spectrum US Season 2. Many people ask, how was I discovered for the show? Funny story. My younger brother, Jack, who has joined me tonight this evening, sent a tweet, back when it was still called Twitter, to the director, <laughs> to the director of the show, Kian O'Cleary. Jack also sent Kian a link to my YouTube channel, and the rest was history. <laughs> Being on the show... Being on the show has afforded me opportunities that I would not have had otherwise. For example, being here with all of you tonight. However, my exposure has also given me the unique opportunity to give back and support the causes that are near and dear to my heart. I want to help raise not only awareness of people on the spectrum or with disabilities of any kind, but to raise the bar on acceptance and equality of such individuals, myself included. Acceptance and equality in friendships, social and professional settings. Being on the show forced me to get out of my comfort zone. I do not know if I could have stood here in front of all of you today a year ago. With the love and support of my family, I have learned how to work through anxiety and at times extreme fear from the new experiences Love on the Spectrum presented. I feel I have experienced growth in less than one year than what might have taken otherwise decades. I continue to put myself in novel settings with the new people and it has helped me enjoy authentic experiences and form new connections that I will always cherish. I would now like to wrap this up with a personal message. Never let anyone tell you what you can or cannot be. I stand before you now a different man, a more mature and aware man, a man that has been blessed, a man that hopes that he can pass on to others a fraction of what has been given to him. Thank you, God bless, stay classy, pleasure, and enjoy your evening.